when you name a show Stranger Things, expect odd things to happen on the set. In this video, Riveted has compiled 20 of the most bizarre things that happened on the set of Stranger Things. Number 20. Losing Voices Characters in Stranger Things live in a world that's full of terrifying monsters that come from terrifying alternate dimensions. So there's a lot of screaming involved while filming. Even though the actors have access to lemon and honey, that doesn't stop them from losing their voices. Millie Bobby Brown admitted that while they were filming Stranger Things 3, she lost her voice five times and had to re-record her lines several times, specifically the screaming ones. When season three came to an end, Millie Bobby Brown had lost her powers, so she will probably need to scream for help and lose her voice more in season four. All the best, Millie. Number 19, someone got stuck in a chair. Millie Bobby Brown recalled one particular moment as one of the strangest things that ever happened behind the scenes of Stranger Things. She told reporters about the incident at a roundtable interview with the press in Tokyo that Noah Schnapp got stuck in a chair. Who gets stuck in a chair? Luckily, he was rescued from the boy-eating chair before it could drag him off to the upside down. If only the powers were real. Number 18. In Stranger Things, Mike and his friends flee the military and Eleven uses her psychic powers to help them escape. Elle had the power to move things with her mind and flip the cars, but in one instance, it was impossible to flip a van high into the air even with the help of explosives. During the for real shoot, one of the explosives failed to explode, and the van skidded off course into one of the cameras, destroying it. The next task was convincing the producers to overlook the fact that the failed shoot had cost thousands of dollars so they could try it again. Luckily, in the second attempt, the cameras captured the glorious flip, and the team recovered the money after millions of people watched the episode. Number 17. Glittery Millie from a very young age, Millie Bobby Brown has been an incredible actress with an instinct beyond what most kids that age are capable of, but at the same time, she's still a little girl. The Duff said she once delayed shooting for 45 minutes because of glitter. Millie Bobby Brown showed up on set and she was just covered head to toe in glitter. When they asked her where she got all that glitter from, Millie innocently said that she had no idea where she got all the glitter. To this day, she has never revealed why she showed up on the set covered in glitter. Number 16. Who farts on set? Many adults think that farting is embarrassing, but for kids, such body functions are hilarious. In 2016, showrunners Matt and Ross Duffer discussed the ups and downs of flipping vans and working with child actors in an article for Entertainment Weekly. Some cast members were often frustrated because the male actors could not stop farting. Case in point, they were shooting a scene in the abandoned bus and one of the boys decided to fart more than once. It became so toxic in the bus that the crew had to temporarily evacuate. No one has revealed the identity of the person who farted, although the moment was memorable enough that David Harbour also brought it up in a Reddit discussion. Number 15. Someone died on Will's behalf There are a lot of complications to working with child actors, and one of them is that you can't always ask kids to do the same things you can ask adults to do. In the first season of Stranger Things, there's a scene where a body that all the characters think is Will's body is discovered in a quarry. Of course, the showrunners couldn't ask young Will to go into the cold water at 3 a.m., so they asked a stunt woman to go into that icy 3 a.m. water as Will Byers so that it would look maximum convincing. She was a 30-year-old woman, but they dressed her in Will's costume and a wig. We didn't even notice that she was so much bigger than Will. Accents were hard. Number 14. Not every actor on Stranger Things is from the U.S., and one of the challenges of being around a non-U.S. actor on a U.S. television show is that you not only have to learn your lines, but you also have to learn to say them with an American accent. British actor Charlie Heaton, who plays Jonathan Byers, had a tough time with one word in particular. He could not say the word Nancy. They would occasionally have to re-record Jonathan's dialogue to make his Nancy pronunciations more American. Hilarious. Number 13, a spooky set. The mall where Stranger Things season three was filmed was the site of a real life gruesome and horrible murder. A young lady was found murdered in a vacant Subway restaurant inside the mall. And worse, her body had been there for two weeks before anyone noticed. The murdered woman's boyfriend was eventually charged with the murder. Stranger Things actors didn't use the mall until five months after the incident, but it must have been really scary for the first few days, especially since the series is very creepy. Number 12. They pranked Noah Schnapp's mom. Part of the plot of season one revolved around a lookalike dead Will Byers, and the crew had a dummy that they used in a few scenes to portray the deceased Will Byers lookalike. The Duffer brothers did something that was a little ethically questionable. They took Noah's mom aside, told her they had something to show her, and led her into a dark closet where they had propped up a frighteningly realistic corpse of her son. She was startled at first, and the Duffer brothers felt like maybe they crossed the line. But after the initial shock, she loved it. Noah's mom got over the shock and even seemed to enjoy posing for selfies with her son's fake corpse. Awkward. Number 11. Faking Sickness the Duffer brothers may have successfully pranked Noah's mother, but they also got a taste of their own medicine. When you have a cast full of kids and they're not all on camera at the same time, there's going to be some downtime, and they're going to get bored and pull a lot of pranks. A 
According to Business Insider, one of Millie Bobby Brown's most epic pranks involved feigning illness in the grossest way possible. The kids pranked the Duffers and they pretended that Millie Bobby Brown was really sick. They even put water in her mouth and then she started puking out the water. Number 10, pranks went sour. In another instance, Millie Bobby Brown and Noah Schnapp decided to prank their costume designer by making her think her wedding was ruined. They called their costume designer and impersonated employees from the venue where she was planning to have her wedding and told her that the venue was no longer available. The prank was evidently so successful that Emily yelled at them and then they had to apologize. Number nine, the name Upside Down was made up on set. Initially, the Duffer Brothers chose the name Montauk for the show as it was the location Jaws was set at. In addition, it was the site of the Montauk Project Urban Legend, which was researching supernatural phenomena in the 80s. Eventually, the show was set in a fictional location, so the writers had more creative freedom. Apart from the name of the show, something else changed while they were on set. As the Duffer Brothers revealed on Beyond Stranger Things, the Upside Down was referred to as the Nether in the original scripts. But once the series aired and fans heard the way Eleven and the boys flip over the Dungeons & Dragons board to explain the alternate dimension, the term Upside Down stuck. The 80s look number 8. The Duffers wanted Stranger Things to look and feel as much like a throwback Spielberg film as possible. To capture the look of watching an old film, grainy footage from real 80s movies was captured digitally and then applied to each episode in post-production. The Duffers also wanted to use old-school effects. They relied primarily on puppetry and practical effects for the various scenes involving the Demogorgon and the Upside Down and used CGI as little as possible. Number 7. Cool Effects In Season 1, Eleven has to cross over to the Upside Down to find Will, and the group builds a sensory deprivation tank. When Eleven gets into the tank, she actually floats, and it's a very cool effect. The Duffer Brothers explained to EW that they followed Mr. Clark's instructions to a T. Over 1,200 pounds of Epsom salt were dissolved into the kiddie pool to make L float. Casting was crazy. Number 6. According to the Duffers, they auditioned over 1,000 child actors for the various roles. To capture the right mood, they had each actor who auditioned read lines from the classic Stephen King adaptation Stand By Me about a group of boys on an adventure to find a rumored dead body in the woods. Out of the people that showed up, 246 auditioned for Eleven, but Millie Bobby Brown already had the upper hand because Stephen King endorsed her. Number five, Millie actually shaved her head. For Millie Bobby Brown, shaving her hair was also very empowering. She wrote on Instagram, the day I shaved my head was the most empowering moment of my whole life. The last strand of hair cut off was the moment my whole face was on the show and I couldn't hide behind my hair like I used to. Her parents, on the other hand, were somehow heartbroken. As the series progressed, Millie was supposed to cut her hair again, but the Duffer Brothers didn't have the heart to tell her to chop it off again. She wore a short wig instead. Number four, things got intense. One of the most intense scenes was when Hopper gets into a fight with Eleven. Hopper's argument with Eleven stems from his choice to keep her locked inside a cabin for nearly a year, all while promising she can see Mike and her other friends. Elle lashes out and causes all manner of havoc. Upon realizing that Hopper had been hiding Eleven from him, Mike lashes out. He had been worried sick and increasingly more depressed, believing Eleven might be dead. He confronted Hopper angrily before collapsing in his arms and crying as he called him a liar over and over. The scene was one of the most emotionally resonant moments in season two for many fans. The actors admitted in interviews that the experience was really intense. Number three, Steve wasn't supposed to last. In Stranger Things, the audience meets Steve, a typical 80s douchebag, complete with Ray-Bans and a popped collar. The Duffer Brothers had initially planned to do away with Steve, but when they started getting to know actor Joe Keery, they rewrote the entire character. Steve started to evolve a bit and became more charming and likable to the point where, when they were writing season one, they realized they wanted to give him more of an arc. Number two, verbal abuse on set. H. Peyton Brown, a former employee for Stranger Things, wrote on Instagram, I personally witnessed two men in high positions of power on the set of Stranger Things seek out and verbally abuse multiple women. While Brown never identified the Duffer Brothers in her Instagram post, she did in subsequent comments. She also shared an Instagram post from an unverified account purporting to belong to Lori Grabowski, a former script supervisor for Stranger Things claiming she was one of those women Peyton referenced. The Duffer Brothers responded by saying, We are deeply upset to learn that someone felt uncomfortable on our set. Due to the high stress nature of production, tempers occasionally get frayed and for that, we apologize. However, we think it is important not to mischaracterize our set where we believe strongly in treating everyone fairly regardless of gender, orientation, race, religion, or anything else. We remain totally committed to providing a safe and collaborative working environment for everyone on our productions. And number one, minors forced to kiss. The verbal abuse claim wasn't the first time the Duffers faced criticism of their treatment of female employees. They were widely lambasted after the release of Stranger Things Season 2 for joking about pushing one of their young actresses into doing the kissing scene against her will. Sadie Sink, who plays Max on the show, said in interviews that she found out that she would be doing a kissing scene 
when she showed up on the set the day of the shoot. The entire conversation, in which Sink repeatedly recalled feeling caught off guard while the Duffers giggle, reflected an odd tone, particularly in light of conversations in Hollywood regarding the exploitation of underage actors and issues of consent. She later walked back her characterization of the kiss in an interview with The Rap, but when pressed on whether her response was coached, a publicist intervened. And there you have it. Did you enjoy the video? Subscribe to Riveted and turn on the notification for other amazing videos, because we publish new content daily. Thank <laughs> you.